Hello. Hello, hello. This is new. I've not done one of these for a, a while, one of these contribute episodes, and I haven't used this platform to do it before. This is the platform we use to do the lives, but um, today I'm using it to chat with Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Cameron Jones, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. How are you, Nathan? Yeah, yeah, really good. It's always hysterical, isn't it? We, we talk at the beginning of these things yeah. as if we haven't been talking. In fact, we've been speaking for about 40 minutes now, waffling on about an awful lot, of really range of topics. But we're not here to waffle. We're here for, uh, for Cameron to, um, to show us something that he's, he's decided he wants to, to offer up to the community, something that perhaps you could take on. If you're into themes and you develop themes, this could be of, of great interest. Um, first of all, before we begin, do you want to just give us a little bit of background about yourself, Cameron, where you are, you know, what your relationship with WordPress is? I think people always like to know who they're listening to. Sure. Uh, so I'm Cameron, as you can probably uh, tell uh, from Nathan's introduction. <laughs> uh, I'm from Australia. Um, I've been sunny Queensland at the moment, but uh, I don't know when this will be published, but uh, moving down to South Australia um, shortly. Um, yeah, I have been working with WordPress for more than six years now. Um, I'm a professional developer. I work with local agencies and my own freelance clients. And I am the founder of the uh, plugin store Mongoose Marketplace. Nice. Thank you very much. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. He reached out to me to say that he had something which could be useful for the sharing of code snippets. And I wasn't entirely sure what that meant. But um, knowing Cameron, he often is watching our lives and things like that. I thought, well, let's let's see, shall we? So he's just given me a very, very quick demo of it. But I'm going to put Cameron's screen up and it'll go all inception on us. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if we can grab it. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't last very long. That's good. Um, so what are we looking at? What is what is it that you've come to tell us about today? Um, so I've, I've put together um, a little something that I've called WP Theme Components. So I found that I um, was running into uh, you know issues where I, I had to uh, reuse code a lot um, between multiple projects. And, um, you know, you, you end up copying and pasting them from, you know, one project to the other, or you create some sort of base theme, and then you have to go through and delete all the stuff you don't need, and you're not sure which files you put all your code in. And, like, I was, I was using the same functions that I, you know, made myself over and over and over. And I'm like, surely there's got to be a better way to manage this. So I built um, Dopey Theme Components. Um, so it's just a little um, file that you uh, put in your thing. And uh, from there, it allows you to um, put uh, components um, inside your theme. Um, and yeah, it makes it really easy to uh, manage them and um, yeah, um, copy your uh, like custom helper functions and commonly use things like, for example, stuff that you might find on WP beginner, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, really uh, reuse them easily between uh, multiple projects that you're working on. And um, hopefully, um, if, um, you know, more and more people start to use this as, you know, part of their theme builds and people start sharing them um, in the community as well. So it's a it's a thing which anybody can f freely get access to. Um, you say that the process is a question of dropping a file. We'll, we'll ask you a little bit more about that in a moment. But at the minute, this is a collection of things. So you've built the framework upon which this all hangs, mm -hmm. and you've put a few of your the, the things that you repeatedly use over and over again. But is the intention then that this this could grow to be bits that have contributed by anybody theme, you know, code snippets that anybody brings along and they think, actually, I'll bet lots of people are doing this one over and over again as well. Here, add it to your theme components directory or whatever. Yeah, certainly. Uh, mm. I've got, I think, a dozen in the directory as it is. And yeah, they're all made by me. Um, but yeah, the intention is to um, obviously open that up to the community at some point. And um, it is like the directory is built on easy digital downloads. So um, obviously, you know, main, um, providing stuff to the community and uh, like maintaining stuff that you've um, done for the community can uh, be quite a time suck. So I've, yeah. um, you know, the options there, if, um, you know, maybe 
perhaps even offer or allow for premium offerings at some point. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So let's take one step back. And you mentioned that if you're a theme developer, there's a, there's a file that you need to download or there's something to do that you need to do. Do you want to just talk us? So, okay. So I'm a complete new noob to this. I've heard about this project. What's the first couple of steps that I need to carry out to make it all happen? Okay, sure. So, um, probably helps if you read the about components um, page on the website, it gives you a brief overview about um, what a component is and how to um, set your theme up for it. And you know what the difference between a component and a plugin is like um, a lot of the stuff I was doing, you know, didn't make sense to be plugins because they were like helper functions or stuff that was really contextual to a theme. So, you know, it made more sense that there was a way to kind of treat code like plugins, but not, you know, be plugins. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing you'll want to do is uh, download. Uh, there's the big button in the menu there. Um, and it'll take you to the GitHub repo. Um, and the, the file you really want to look at is this components.php file. Um, I've, I've even set up a uh, local demo site to uh, demonstrate this on. Okay. Um, this is uh, the WP Builds website. Congratulations, Nathan, you have a new website. <laughs> yes, looking, looking much better, I might say. <laughs> I, I think it's a lot lighter. Uh, I think Google will like it a lot more. Um, even has HTTPS. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is you know the re new revolution in website design. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll demonstrate how this works, you know, with Nathan's brand new WP builds website. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you, you're going to want this components.php file. Um, and the easiest way is to just click that raw button and then save it. Uh, for me, uh, yes, we're in the right place. So I've got this, uh, WP builds theme I've set up okay. and, um, just make sure it's a PHP file and just save it in your theme directory. Okay, that was um, easy enough. So just in WP content themes, there it goes, right yeah. in there, alongside, no, inside the theme. Yep. Right. Um, you can, like, if you have PHP files, like, in, in an includes directory, like, you uh -huh. can put it in there. It's not yeah. really uh, tied to anything. Um, you can put it wherever you like in your theme. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, the first part um, it won't actually do anything yet because it won't run. Um, so all you have to do is, uh, you know, just include it in your theme, in your functions file, um, just like so, uh, components. Um, and so now um, our lovely new WP Build website should have components running. Uh, there, there are no components at the moment, so we can't really see any difference. Um, but yeah, that, that's as simple as it is to get um, your theme set up to uh, use theme components. Okay, so download it from the GitHub repo, the components.php file, stick it inside the currently used theme, and then include it in functions.php. Okay, so we're we're set up. It's now ready to go. What's um? Where does the what what happens next? What's what's up? Uh, then you can start adding components to your heart's content. Okay, um, so. Uh, for example, like one of the ones, like the one that really inspired me to uh, build theme components was uh, this component down the bottom here, register local assets. So you've got your traditional like WP, NQ, script and style functions. Um, but I, I found that they were a bit cumbersome and I was, you know, rewriting stuff. It wasn't mm -hmm. as efficient as I would have liked it. Um, and so, yeah, I made a, a nice little function called um, register local assets and, um, yeah, allows um, you to, you know, register your scripts and styles with a lot less code. Yeah. Um, so, like, I've got inside um, our theme here, I've got uh, Bootstrap already and yep. I've added some, some classes to the theme. Uh, there's not a lot going on, as you can uh, probably tell, uh, but, you know, once we add some bootstrap, um, it should be a little nicer. Um, nice, this is great. Yeah, so you just have to click download. Um, and then we can uh, take that and um, 
Oh, we'll, we'll move that into our. Oh, I've got the downloads folder open twice. And we'll move that into our um, uh, into our WQ builds uh, folder. Okay. Um, and you can see um, there's a new thing components folder. So the components scripts will create that folder. You okay. Know, if if right. it runs and it doesn't exist. Um, but you know, if you're just adding it, yeah, you can create the folder, um, and that's where our theme components will go. And so we'll want to extract the folder that's in the zip file, yeah, and place it in our theme components folder. Okay. And so, um, and we can delete the zip file now that we we don't need it. Um, so it's now living inside the theme cons theme components folder, all unzipped and ready to go. Okay. Yep. Uh, so this one is a helper function. So, um, you know, if we refresh it again, nothing's going to happen because it's a function that we have to actually call. Um, there are other ones that add hooks, like, for example, like these meta tag ones, they add a hook. Um, and, you know, that will just automatically start working on your website um, and stuff like the register local assets. You know, it's providing a function for you to use in your thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, We've got our bootstrap here, and we're going to want to um, we're going to want to like include it mm -hmm. in our um, in our thing. So um, if we open up our thing components, you can see uh, there's our register local asset function. Uh, it is namespaced. I've namespaced all the um, components just to help avoid any potential like, mm. function name conflicts. Um, but yeah, in this in queue scripts hook I've got here, um, we'll just make our uh, function call. So normally with like, when you enqueue something, you'd go, go to in queue style and you'd add, you know, bootstrap. And then you'd go get template directory Right, and then CSS and bootstrap dot min dot CSS, um, no dependencies, a version. I don't know what version, I'll just say 5.5 because that's what WordPress is. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, and a lot of what I like to do is uh, use the file modifier time to set the version. Um, okay. Like if you're yep. building, building a website. Um, Sorry, my webcam keeps dying for some Doesn't reason. Matter. Doesn't um, matter. Yeah, if um, yeah, you're you're building a theme, and they're not necessarily versioned when you're building it for a client. You don't necessarily have version one, version one point one, that sort of thing. So, you know, use the modified time as the version, um, and you know, you're pretty much writing this whole thing again, uh, like multiple times in the same thing. Um, yeah. So to replace that. And, and also, like, you've got, you know, this sort of thing, like uh, calling the uh, template directory and that sort of thing. So um, alternatively, you've got this register local asset, and all you have to do is pass it this, um, the slug or the name of your asset, um, and you don't have to specify CSS or JavaScript. It will detect that itself. Nice. And the path will be relative to the theme rather right. than, like, to call, you know, get template directory or whatever. So you just say CSS bootstrap.min.css. And hopefully the live, uh, live demo gods will smile upon me and this <laughs> will look a little prettier. Uh, no, it didn't. That's because I haven't actually enqueued it. Um, you still need to uh, oh, yeah. enqueue it itself. Um, this, well, it'll only register it. Um, but once we've enqueued it, there we go. Ta -da. Ta -da. And so, yeah, compared to the the previous, um, you know, in queue style function I had to write, this was a lot less code. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you uh, like set your um, file up to use the namespaces uh, more efficiently as well, then you end up with a, a function that looks like that. Yes. And you, know, you don't have to repeat yourself. And like you can pass the other arguments optionally. Um, if you really need to override them. Um, but other than that, like it will automatically uh, like determine the version from when the file was modified and that sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's yeah. really nice. So that's just one 
though. What, yeah. what, what are some of the others that you've, um, that you were demonstrating in the directory a minute ago? So. Sure. Um, so oh, I've got uh, about a dozen. Yeah. Um, so like generating post type labels. So if you look at like the register post type and all the different labels you can have, like it gets a bit cumbersome if you, you know, want to do it properly, but you, you know, there's like 30 different labels for each post type that you can have. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what that does, you just provide it like a singular and a plural, and then it will just generate the rest for you and save you having to like copy that from the docs and change it all over and over. Right. Right. Fill out the empty boxes. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, like move custom menu item classes to anchor element. So this one I found like if you're adding like icon fonts to your menus, um, so it would add the icon to the, like the class added to the list item and not the anchor. Right. right and right. so you end up with the icon, but you couldn't like, it wouldn't be part of the link. Um, so that one moves it so that it is part of the link. Nice. That's a nice, well, I'll bet. I bet from time to time we've all had that one. I certainly have. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Just a little, like, little ten minute little time saver right there. That's nice. Yeah, and like even that button class. So like uh, this one's actually being used on this website itself. Uh, so like the button class is on the anchor element itself, right, not the, right. the list item element in the menu. Yeah, just fixes that yeah. little problem. Nice. Yep. Yep. Um, like that one just changes the default WordPress you know, ellipses thing with the square brackets, which I don't think anyone ever wants to use. Um, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, if you if you know that, you know, you just want it to be three dots, uh, you can just grab that and dump it in your theme and you don't have to look at the codex or WP Beginner or any of those, you know, things to try and figure it out. Like, yeah. you know what you want, it's just there. Um, yeah, I've got like a couple meta tag ones, uh, the responsive one, like I build all my themes from scratch. So I got sick of looking at um, CSS tricks every time I wanted to build a website <laughs> to figure out what the responsive meta tag was. It's just now I can yeah. just download something that says this is a responsive meta tag. Nice. So you basically put together these 12 or so snippets for stuff that, you know, you found throughout your WordPress journey. You just, the, for some reason, you're repeating it. Your brain can't yep. quite remember it, probably in some cases as well, and uh, yep. and it just saves you a bunch of time. So this this what what even do we call this? Do we call this a framework that you've built here? Something along those lines. Um, where do we find it? How do we? What's the URL for the the, the project itself? Uh, so it's wpthemecomponents.com. dot com. Nice. That's where you can find all this uh, stuff. You can uh, download it. Um, you can find the directory. Uh, it is also a um, a GitHub as well, where, you know, all the components and the components tool itself uh, can be downloaded from there as well. Yeah. And if somebody was looking at this and thinking, boy, not only am I going to make use of that, um, but I'm going to want to push things back toward you, Cameron, for, for inclusion in this components directory. You said that that might be something that comes because, yeah, curating and hosting, all of that stuff. It, yeah. It, it always starts out as a nice little pet project idea, doesn't it? And then a hundred hours later, it's like, why did I start doing this? Is there a, um, oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Is there a, is there a way that people right at this early stage could, um, submit stuff to you or are you just staying clear of that right now and people can just create their own for themselves and that's how it is. Um, yeah, at the moment, there's no real way to share it on here just yet. Uh, certainly part of my relatively short term plans, um, depending, you know, how much, uh, spare time I have to, uh, look after this. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately I do have a, a lot going on and haven't been able to like, you know, dedicate as much time to it as I would have liked. Um, and you know, so I'd like to Im improve how like this is getting it from GitHub, you know, before I open that up to the community to like contribute. Um, but, you know, if someone said to me, hey, I've got this thing and I'd really, you know, like to, to share it, um, I'm sure I could, you know, uh, put it up there if, if it looks like it's something that could be useful. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, no, nothing no. official just yet, but yeah. uh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's in, in the works. 
yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's the best way to to say it. Maybe if you send something, I might do something with it, but I might not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to see see how it goes. As you said, you're moving fairly soon. But I've noticed there's a contact button hovering over at the top there near to download. Is that the best way to communicate with you, or do you have a Twitter handle or an email address that you w wish to share? Um, yeah, uh, the contact page isn't much. It's just a contact form, really. Um, but uh, if you want to talk to me directly, um, yeah, Cameron Jones Web is where you can find me online. Um, that's like I'm on all the socials there, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Uh, if if that username exists, that's me. Um, and uh, yeah, that's yeah how you can get in contact with me. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's it. That's that's ideal. So if you're into let me just turn the screens off for a minute. I'm not sure if we need that now. If you're into making themes and you like Cameron's idea, uh, why don't you go download it and you know start using it for yourself? And uh, you never know, maybe in the future Cameron will make something more of it. But for now, totally usable by the looks of it for your for your own stuff. And it may be like three or four projects from now. You're thinking, boy, this was. I'm so glad I saw that video. It's just saved me a ton of time making my own making my own repository of snippets for the future. Yeah, that's great. Cameron, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for reaching out and mentioning that you wanted to, you know, do this episode. I'm really appreciative. Nice one. Yeah, no worries. Uh, always uh, glad to uh, contribute to the uh, WP Builds community. And, yeah. You know, they're, they're such a nice group of people. I thought that, you know, uh, they might be the... Uh, the best ones to share this with first so yeah 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 well that's very considerate of you i will make jolly sure it hits the um it hits the airwaves very soon so thanks cameron bye-bye for now <laughs>